at what um and its evolution is is is, is a beautiful story as as you're explaining it um this your pivotal moment in this uh come also with you thinking about its own succession mm. its own growth its own people growth and and, and what are what were some of the major challenges mm-hmm. in that in, in that path funding is always a problem yeah <laughs> if you're an african institution um, yeah. and your government doesn't put money in research yeah it puts money in research but not in the things that you're doing mm. so funding is always a problem yeah we spend a lot of time fundraising mm. and no one pays you to fundraise mm. So as I've said, the funder who gave you a grant wants their grant done. Yeah. And then we have expectations. You need to publish papers and do all this and that. So fundraising really is something we did in our free time. Mm. So which means like um, work life balance. It's a lot of time. We write a lot of proposals. Mm. We spend so much time on fundraising. So mm. it was really something which takes and which took mm. um, a lot of our time. Mm. Work life balance was almost mm. a luxury. From your experience, what's the percentage of um, successful proposals ratio? Uh-huh. It's very high. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very now it nice. is very high now, because I think we've built a system that works. Yeah. And um, and now we are reaping the benefits really of that's that system. That's really good to hear because our success rate is shockingly high. I that's think. that's super good to hear. <laughs> yeah, I think um, we we compute success rate based on the number of successful applications so yeah. numeric but also yeah. we compute in dollar terms yeah and um i think our success rate this year is about 66 percent that's super good so yeah. and what are some of what are the tools of trade what are, <laughs> what, what are the secrets is it you do you do you start off with a good no go no no go, good no decision go. yeah yeah what, what's your what's that story <laughs> oh my god that's a long one it's yeah a long story Obviously, you that know, you've learned from that, and it takes time. To it get to it that takes point. time to yeah. make those decisions. No, to get to the point of having such a good a success. success rate. Yeah. So, because really, the way research funding works, as I've said, funders fund three things: they mm-hmm. fund people, yes, they find place, mm-hmm. and then they find they fund project. Mm. So, people is the person applying, yeah, or the team, yeah. Place is the institution, yeah. And then project now is the actual the reason the science mm. like um, how imp- how convincing and how compelling mm. is the science so all those three things have to work out mm. together to have a good success rate mm. so as at the institutional level it is how do you build people and how do you build teams and so having a clear like pathway of building people so that three years five years six years seven years you really have people who are going to be the drivers Mm. of success. Mm. So when I talk about the postdoc, we have very clear expectations for every position. And success in grants is embedded into those, Mm. you know, um, like pathways. How do you move from one level to the next? Mm. But then after a certain level, we don't expect you to be successful on your own. We want the people around you to be as successful as you are. So Mm. we have really, I think, a strong mechanism of making sure that you have a strong pipeline. Mentorship. And so through mentorship, mm. we measure how much you mentor, we mm, measure how much mm. people succeed mm. as a result of your mentorship. Mm. We measure, um, yeah, we measure that. We measure mm. how much you train. Mm. So uh, if I was to give an example, when you come as a postdoc, I mm. told you six papers mm. submitted, mm-hmm. four published, mm. one grant or two mm-hmm. managed well. Mm-hmm. When you come as an associate, mm-hmm. the expectations are similar, mm-hmm. but now we embed successful fundraising mm. that you should develop ideas mm. and we measure if mm. you don't develop ideas then you get low marks if mm. you develop ideas then you get high marks mm. if the ideas are successful you get very high marks mm. so if you spend three years as, as an associate and you don't get a significant grant we can give you another three-year contract at the end of that if you've not really got any grant we don't renew your contract mm. so most people actually they manage to go through that mm. and they get grants that now allow them to be promoted mm. to the next level mm. the next level we call it research scientist at that level now fundraising becomes a bigger part so we are not so much concerned about how many papers you publish we are concerned about how many people that you supervise publish papers and now the bigger part is in supervision and mentorship and project management and oversight 
So really the system is set up that way that the, the, we, we provide support. We have a lot of support for people to get training and skills and mentorship and all this, but also the reward system is built in a way that it rewards things that allow the institution to grow. Hmm. So if I start with a good postdoc today, seven years from now, they'll have like a team of 15 around mm. them. Seven years, I think mm. that's what it takes mm. for somebody to get the two grants or three grants that allow them to hire 15 people around them. Mm. Now those 15 people, give them five years, uh, maybe out of those 15, like three will be postdocs. And then now they give them seven years. Wow. So it's like really a cascaded mm. system. And I think now we're at the point where we are reaping the benefits of this investment mm. over time in a very strong pipeline. Mm. So mm. we have a very strong pipeline when it comes to people. Mm. But then we also have to understand how the system works, that if you're a postdoc, you can't shoot for a grant that um, you're competing with somebody who is 10 years post PhD. That's true. And that's, it's good It's good to understand that mm. so that you don't go for things for which you are not competitive at all. Because mm. the, the people reviewing those grants mm. are comparing CVs. People, remember, they look mm. at people, they look mm. at your CV. How many mm. papers do you have? How mm. many grants have you run? Mm. Um, how many, I don't know, conference attendances? Mm. So if you're competing with someone who has 150 papers and then you have 25, mm. you really, there's no competition. Mm. So as people, from that perspective, you cannot succeed. So you have to understand where do you compete. Yeah. And, and yet you can't reach the 125 without getting the grant. Mm. So which means at the early, uh, the early stage of, of uh, the career, mm. we connect people with now the people who have 125 papers mm. as mentors. So mm. they are, they, they are co-applicants, they are co-investigators. Mm. So we encourage a lot of networking and partnership mm. with people within, but also outside mm. the mm. so that somebody can hold your hand for three, four, five years mm. and then get, get you to a point where now you can compete. Mm. On your own, mm. then you also hold other people's hands, and mm. then you mm. know the cycle that's, continues. That, that's a lovely model. Yeah, that's yeah. a super, super great model. Very, <laughs> uh, the coaching there is very strategic uh, yeah. to ensure yeah, yeah. that it co reproduces and thinks about um, succession and and continuity and sustainability, yeah. and consequently also results into that kind of thing that we are um, thinking about, uh, talking about right now. You know, in terms of even like a successful pipeline mm -hmm. um, and and uh, congr kudos <laughs> and congratulations to having uh, to, 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 to having that.